Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby, and today I'm going to be starting another thriller reading vlog. In this vlog, I read four, four different thriller books that I'm very excited about. Some of them are new releases, and some of them are ones that I've heard a lot of hype about that I've been wanting to get to for a very long time. So in this reading vlog, you will see me read Finlay Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Cosimano. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year because the first book in this series, Finlay Donovan is Killing It, was my number two favorite book of 2021. So I can't believe the sequel is here. I'm so excited. And then I will also be reading The Sorority Murder, which this is a book that just came out in December that I've been very interested in and I got my hands on the audiobook from my library. I'll also be reading The Arrangement, which this is a thriller that I feel like has all the buzz right now on the interwebs. I keep seeing this book everywhere and so I just decided to pick it up, give it a go. And then the fourth and final book that I'll be reading for this video is Good Rich People, which this one is a new release as well. And this is just a book that I'm super fascinated by, not only because the concept sounds like something I would enjoy, but also because I previously read a book by this author that ended up being pretty disappointing, but I do enjoy her writing style for the most part, so hoping for the best with this one. Yeah, let me send you back to about a week ago when I started with Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. <laughs> My dinky's so precious. Aww. Hello, what's up? It's February 1st and today I am going to start Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. I'm starting with this one because I'm so freaking excited and I think this book publishes today. Um, and anyways, I'm going to be doing reading sprints over on my friend Katie's channel. Um, it's going to be on both of our Patreons this afternoon. So I figured what better time to start the new Finlay Donovan than now. I am still recovering from my booster shot that I got yesterday. So I'm just trying to like take it easy today, laying in bed a lot today. And hopefully I can get through a decent chunk of this this afternoon. So very excited to read this one. up it's like four it's almost five in the afternoon right now and i've been doing some reading sprints with both katie and aaron over on patreon for the last like couple of hours and i was able to get all the way up to 130 pages into finlay donovan knocks him dead and so far this book is just so freaking cute it has like the same fun energy that the first finley donovan book had and it's just like pulling me right back into this world you know i wasn't sure if i was going to remember <laughs> everything from the first Finlay Donovan because I don't often read series, okay? I am not a series reader kind of person. And so I was like looking over my notes. I was like, you know, it's been almost a year since I read the first Finlay Donovan. So I was like, oh my God, am I even going to remember? But luckily I just like really quickly went over all my notes from the first book and I got a general idea of all the things that happened in the first book. So I was able to read this one without too much confusion. But, uh, but yeah, I do think this book does a nice job too of kind of recapping some things that happened or like who certain characters are because for a second I was like wait who is that and then it'll give you like a little like brief description on like what happened with them recently so I'm like okay cool but yeah I don't know I'm still loving the vibe of this one it's still giving me major dead to me vibes just like the first book did and like yeah I'm just enjoying my life right now reading this book it's just so flipping cute my sister should be home within the next like 20 minutes and then we're gonna make some dinner and then I don't know what we're gonna watch tonight, but um, we're probably gonna watch that new zombie show on Netflix because we've watched two episodes so far and it's like really good. Like I love this new Netflix show. It's called All of Us Are Dead, I think. Mm. Should I? Probably not. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
and reached for a heavy duty flashlight from the top shelf and set it on the cedar chest. Then she opened the door and the unable to the sofa. Hello, hello. It is the next morning, or should I say afternoon, because it's about two o'clock in the afternoon right now. And um, I didn't end up reading like anything last night. I actually just spent last night doing some editing and like other stuff that I had to get done. Um, I just decided that I needed to get out of the apartment <laughs> because this morning and like last night, I've just been doing so much stuff in the apartment lately and it's just been feeling so like claustrophobic and like I just needed to get out and I'm kind of upset because I spent this whole morning doing some like adulting things that ended up being a complete waste of time and it's just been kind of like a stressful morning where I just feel like I needed to get out so I came to one of my favorite parks in Washington that is like right on the water it's just like a really beautiful sight like I'm right on the water and it's just kind of like lovely and peaceful and even though it's kind of like too cold <laughs> to be outside right now it's about like 30 something degrees and it's actually supposed to snow in like an hour i just decided that i wanted to get out and you know maybe just read finley donovan in my car you know there's also a really cute coffee shop that's like right like a few steps away from me from where i'm parked so i might get an iced coffee even though it's cold outside and they'll probably think i'm crazy but i just can't do hot coffee right now you know like with my throat i don't know why for some reason iced coffee never hits me with my gird as hard as hot coffee does i don't know the science behind that but that's just the way it is because it's cold but I got my iced coffee and it's really good. So I'm just gonna hang out in here for a little bit and read. up snowing for real <laughs> what's up i am home from the park and it was quite lovely i mean i only read about 30 to 40 pages of my book so like i didn't read a ton but also it was just such a nice like hour and a half of just like relaxing and like being by the water like i really want to do that more often you know where i just kind of like go by myself like leave the apartment go somewhere beautiful and just chill and read like even if it's too cold to be outside i like the idea of just being able to like sit in my car and just like have a chill moment you know it was just very lovely and literally as i was leaving it started raining a ton and then as i was getting closer to my house it started snowing so like the snow was an accurate prediction for the weather people for once and yeah i don't know but um i am planning to continue reading Finlay Donovan. I'm still really loving it and there was something that happened in those pages that I just read that was very exciting. Some shit is really going down now, you know, because I feel like for the first like 150-ish pages or so, it's just a lot of them like going back and forth and doing different things, but then now I'm like, oh, okay, this is where the plot is really coming in. Okay, hi. It's like 12 30 in the morning but i just got up to page 2 30 in this book and i gotta be honest like i don't know if it's just me and like my inability to focus <laughs> right now in like these last two days but i feel like this book isn't holding my attention the same way that the first book did like i don't know i'm definitely still having fun with this book and with the story and i love these characters but i don't think i'm having as much fun with this one as I did with the first one, or at least, I don't know, like I'm not wanting to devour this story the way that I did with the first one. Usually I can tell how much I'm enjoying a book based on how much I want to pick it back up to continue reading. Tonight, I was just on my phone like watching TikToks and then I just got sucked into TikTok, which you know, that usually happens. But like, if I'm really enjoying the book, like if it's, if I know in my gut that it's gonna be a five-star book, usually I can set aside all of my like distractions and just continue with the book because I'm so invested. But I guess for some reason with this, I'm just allowing myself to get distracted. And so that's how I know 
that I'm not enjoying this one as much as I did with the first one because I would never have allowed myself to be so distracted when reading the first book, you know? I mean, it's not to say that I'm not enjoying it because I definitely am enjoying it and I do think that this is just as fun and cute as the first book, but there's just something about this one that I'm not vibing with as strongly as I vibed with the first book, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. I don't even know what it is about this book that I'm not vibing with as much. I just don't find myself as invested in the story, I guess, and I'm just frustrated that I'm getting distracted so easily, I guess. It's just one of those things where I can't tell if it's me or if it's the book. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, oh, it's about 10.30 at night and I just finished Finlay Donovan Knocks Him Dead. I really enjoyed this book, okay? I really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I think I'm giving it four stars and I know that sounds like it's disappointing just because I love this series so much and because, you know, the first book was literally in my top three favorite books of last year. So like, yes, I'm kind of disappointed that this wasn't like a five star, like absolute all time favorite for me. But at the same time, I don't know if I was really expecting it to be just because I'm not a huge series reader. And it's for the reason that I feel like usually the sequels can never live up to the first book for me. And I feel like that's just the case with a lot of things. But this book was really cute. And I feel like with this book, I think Vero was the standout character for me this time around because you know usually it's like Finlay and of course in this book it still was Finlay like I do love her character and she's still really fun but Vero had such a great story happening in this book and I just found that I really cared about everything that was going on with her a lot more I guess and oh my god she had some really great one-liners in this book like I was using my orange highlighter in here for anything that I found to be really funny and most of the time it was Vero's comments about things that she would say like what the heck she was just so entertaining and so funny and I can just tell that this book you know it did the thing again where it just kind of like leaves you hanging and you know that there's gonna be a third book which I am still excited for a third book obviously like I still I love this book I love this series it's just so fun and cute and still has like major like dead to me vibes like I just love the idea of these two women just like trying to figure shit out you know and they're both just really smart and really clever and I just have a really great time reading about them so <laughs> so yeah it was a four star it wasn't perfect but I still loved it. Anyways, I'm not totally sure what I'm planning to read next. I did get the audiobook checked out for Devil House, so I think I'm gonna start listening to that one tonight. What's up? Hello, it's the next morning, and last night I tried to listen to the Devil House audiobook and I only got about like 20% in before I was like what the fuck is happening like I don't understand um it feels very much not like horror or thriller at all it just kind of feels like I don't know kind of like literary fiction I guess it's just not really what I'm in the mood for at the moment um and then I also got checked out the audiobook for my library for the sorority sorority bleh, sorority murder by Allison Brennan and now I'm 23% of the way into this audiobook I decided to change it up and listen to this one instead and so far I'm enjoying it but yeah this morning I just I went to the gym which was like the first time I've been to, a, to the gym in a while. I'm trying to get back into the routine of like going to the gym a lot more often. And then I also hit up Trader Joe's, which I'm excited to have gone because it's been a while since I've gone to Trader Joe's and I've been wanting to go back for a while and I got some exciting things. So, you know, and now I plan to be very productive and have like a cleaning day in my apartment. And I'm just gonna continue listening to this audiobook today and hopefully get a lot of it done. Hi, what's up? It's like 2.45 in the afternoon. I finally finished all of the cleaning that I was trying to get done today because um, back in our like pantry, like we only clean out our pantry like a few times a year, if that. And it's been a long time since we've cleaned it out. So I wanted to go in there and like, you know, see what we needed, see what I could throw out. There was a lot of stuff that was like expired that was in there. You know, just the usual like adulting things. And then I went back to the grocery store because there was a few more things I needed for dinner tonight. And ugh, grocery shopping is just so time consuming and it just takes me forever. And it was so busy, you know, because it's like a Friday afternoon now and it was just like hectic. But the good news is that I've been listening to the sorority murder 
on audio like almost all day today because I'm now 73% of the way through the audiobook, which puts me at about 315 pages into this little book. This book is about like 440 pages, so I do still have this, you know, chunk left here, but oh my gosh, I've talked about this before, but this is like my favorite book size ever. It's just so cute. It's like kind of a little bit bigger than a regular mass market paperback, but it's like smaller than the average size paperback, and that's like half the reason why I've been wanting to read this book. Like, I know it's so shallow, but like, this book is <laughs> the size is just so cute and perfect. Sorry if you hear Tank, he's like right next to me being really loud and obnoxious as usual. But yeah, I don't know. I think so far this book is interesting. It's not like the most interesting thriller that I've ever read in my life or anything like that, but it's an interesting premise, you know? It's about this girl that was living in this sorority who went missing and then she got like murdered or somebody murdered her, but they don't know why or how. It's like a very strange case, you know, because she went missing for a whole week before they found her body and they know that she was alive for most of the week that she was missing. And there's just a lot of really interesting things about this case, but the main story happening in this book is about how this guy who's a senior at the college, he makes this podcast about her unsolved murder because he's hoping by having this podcast that people will, you know, start talking again and there'll be more conversation and that they'll be able to solve what happened to her. And so this entire story, you know, you're just following this dude doing this podcast and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the podcast is like super interesting. Like I love whenever books have like a podcast element in them. I just think it makes them like 10 times more fascinating. And I love that he has the help of like kind of this woman who's like a professional that's like helping him through this process and like helping him figure out what he could use as like real evidence and like not real evidence. And it's just interesting, I don't know, I'm enjoying it. It's not like the most crazy thriller ever, but it's definitely entertaining enough and it's like holding my interest throughout the day. So that's a good sign to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm curious to see where this last little bit goes, um, but I think I might just lay on the couch with my tanks. For the rest of the day, I was gonna- ugh, I was so tempted to like make a chocolate cake right now because I just got this like cake mix and this frosting at the store because it just looked so good. But I think I'm gonna hold off for now. Like maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna finish this book right now. Hello, it's a little bit later in the afternoon, but I wanted to let you know that I finished reading the sorority murder. And honestly, I have like meh feelings about this. I feel like the last third of this book was actually really boring and <laughs> I don't know, like as much as I do love like the podcast element in this book, I just didn't find it as suspenseful as I wanted things to be. And like by the time the ending, like all the things were revealed, I just realized like I don't really care that much because I feel like so much of this book, like we don't get to like see a lot of the action as it's happening, if that makes sense. It's like we just get to kind of hear about it through like witnesses and, and like people who might have seen something and just like, you know, comments from witnesses and stuff like that. So I don't know, I just thought it was kind of, it was all right. You know, this was like nothing different, nothing crazy for a thriller. It wasn't very exciting. I don't know, I know this isn't this author's like first book because I actually checked on Goodreads. They actually have quite a number of books, but for some reason this kind of reads like a debut or something to me just because the writing is so simplistic and kind of basic and like really easy to read, which made it a quick read, you know, because I was able to get through almost this whole thing in one day. But at the same time, I just kind of wanted more from the story, you know? And also, I don't know why, but I feel like if you would have told me that this book came out in like the early 2000s, I would have been like, yeah, sure. Like that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know why, it just feels like this could have been written a long time ago and I would not have even known. So yeah, anyways, I'm like so freaking tired from doing all of the things today. Like, oh my gosh, I'm getting so sore from my workout. And now I'm gonna start getting dinner ready with my sister and I, I'm just so fucking tired. Oh my God. <laughs> Yum, these were a success, kind of, sort of. Pink. Yeah. Okay, look at this cute ass little cider that I got today at Trader Joe's. I just wanted to try it because it's Cosmic Crisp. And it's like a little apple and tree. Isn't it the cutest little can you've ever seen? Anyways, let's try it. It's rare that I find a cider that I don't enjoy, to be honest. Because cider's just kind of my thing. I like it dry, I like it sweet, I like all kinds of ciders. Give this one a go. Cheers. <laughs> uh, 
delish. Delicious? It's delish. I fucking knew it. This one's like berry apple-y. Okay. Like I can just taste the apples strong, but like in a good way, you know? Uh -huh. You wanna try it? Okay. <laughs> Mm. Super apple right? Refreshing. Mm-hmm. It's not dry at all. I know, it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. Very apple-ish. I like sweet like that though, but that's dangerous. That's 8% alcohol. I know, it's 8%. It it's up. It's 8%. All it would take is one of these it and like I'd be juice. fucked up. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Episode 8, let's go! All of us are dead. Show's so addicting. Hello, what's up? It's Sunday. It's been a few days since I last updated you on anything, but I haven't been reading. I've honestly, I've gotten sucked down the uh, hole of All of Us Are Dead on Netflix, and I'm just obsessed. I, I don't even, yeah, it's, it's bad. But I wanted to let you know that I am starting the arrangement. I've only read the first chapter, um, but I'm currently doing some reading sprints right now on my Patreon. And so hopefully I can get some reading done this afternoon. This is the setup that we have going on over here on Patreon. It's very exciting. And also my sister's doing her bullet journal like right next to me. It's just a great time. Um, I'm gonna just try to get some reading done on this book. Hopefully I can get started. It's actually kind of short. It's only like 200-ish pages. And um, I don't know, all I know is that it's about a couple who you know, they're married and now they're making this arrangement where they're gonna get to fuck other people. So like, this can't go well, right? Like, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I just wanted to update you again. Sorry if you can hear the dishwasher in the background, but I just turned it on. But I'm now 75 pages into the arrangement. I only was able to read a little bit during the reading sprints today, but now I'm starting to really get invested in like what's going on. You know, I find it very fascinating that this book is about, you know, this couple who wants to make this arrangement where they can kind of, you know, go and see other people and they don't like have to tell each other about it. I just kind of love books like this. Um, it's kind of reminding me a little bit of like The Swap by Robin Harding. Like I just love the idea of married couples doing things with other people in their marriage. I just find the concept very intriguing to be honest. And yeah, I'm probably just gonna read a little bit more tonight. I don't know if me and my sister are gonna watch anything tonight. I've just been watching edits of All of Us Are Dead all day. Like literally all day. Like I'm obsessed with that show. Like you know sometimes when you watch a TV show and then you just get so obsessed that you like immediately want to rewatch it and like I was looking up fan fictions last night, I was watching edits on Instagram and on YouTube and it's just taking over my life, you know? Like it's just so good. Yeah, anyways, here's a tanky. Aww. <laughs> he doesn't like the camera in his face, but he does love the attention, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Hello, hello. It is the next night and I've been reading The Arrangement pretty much all night and I just got to page 184. I literally have a sliver of this book left and I think I just got to the twist in the book that I think everybody talks about and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I'm so confused. I mean, I will admit I'm surprised. I didn't see it coming, but am I a fan of this twist? I don't know yet. So I'm gonna finish it really fast and then come back to you with full thoughts. <laughs> okay, what the fuck? <laughs> I just finished the arrangement and I was wrong. Um, the twist that I was talking about was only the first of many. Like this book is only like about 200 pages and it just packed so much into that ending. My mind was just like, what the fuck did I just read? So I, I will say that I do get the hype with this one. Okay, I get the hype. I feel like if I would have read this a couple years ago, I probably would have given it like a glowing five stars and my mind would have been completely blown. But reading it now, like I did enjoy it, okay? Like, I mean, I wasn't very happy about that first twist. I was like, okay, what the heck? And then there was another twist that I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Like that seems a little far-fetched for me. But then the very ending, I was very surprised by and that's a twist that I've seen done in other thrillers before but for some reason like I did not connect that and I didn't think that was what was gonna happen in this but like I don't know I feel like I'm becoming less of a fan of like domestic thrillers where we're just kind of like following a husband and a wife or I just feel like sometimes they're so like hit or miss for me and I feel like for the most part this one just felt 
okay to me up until that very ending. Like, those last, like, couple of pages, like, that last chapter, holy shit, like, that was mind-blowing shit to me. And that was, like, a really good twist. I would recommend this, you know, to people that are just getting into thrillers, you know, because it's, it's fast-paced, it has short chapters, and it's, like, only 200 pages. Like, it's a quick read, you know? Like, I read this within two days. Like, you could probably read this within one sitting if you really wanted to. I just didn't love it, I guess, the way that I was expecting to with all the hype surrounding this book right now, you know? Like, I feel like everybody's talking about this book, but I'd still give it, like, I'm, like, torn between, like, a 3.5 and a 4 star. It's, like, I did enjoy it. I do appreciate, like, a good, fast, quick read when, when it comes to thrillers. Like, I don't like books to drag on longer than they need to, but at the same time, like, some of the characters decisions in this book it just feels convenient for the plot if that makes sense like it doesn't feel like they would actually make those decisions but yeah I mean it was good I see the hype I see why everybody loves this I don't know if I plan to read the sequel hello um it has been a couple of days honestly since I've last updated in this vlog I've been like moving back and forth between being in a thriller mood and being in a romance mood and I don't know what's going on so I'm like double vlogging right now but it's been a couple days since I've last seen you on this vlog I'm currently at the gym which is just so crazy you know like this is like a new thing for me that I'm actually trying to follow through on like going to the gym more often but anyways I wanted to let you know that last night I started another thriller book I started reading good rich people by Eliza Jane Brazier and uh, this is a book that has just come out recently that I've like had my eye on for a while that I've been wanting to read I was gonna try to wait to get the audiobook from the library but I'm still like four weeks out from getting the audiobook so I just ended up going ahead and downloading the ebook to my phone yeah I stayed up you know kind of late last night reading the ebook because I got so invested so I got to page 133 of 351 so I'm only about like 35% of the way into this book but it's just so fascinating so far um, I kind of love you know thrillers that have this trope of like eat the rich kind of vibes you know and that's definitely the kind of vibe that we're having in this one but it's really interesting because it's about this married couple who they're like super rich and the guy's mom like the husband's mom is also super fucking rich and they live in this house that's like really huge and loaded but then they also have this like guest house that they rent out to different tenants and the rich people play this like sick game almost where they like try to ruin the lives of the tenant who like moves in and it's just like really interesting i will say like most of the story is told from the wife's point of view like lila i think her name is lila i can't remember but uh, most of the story is told from her point of view and she kind of thinks what they do is wrong because she's like married into it you know like she married her husband and then his mom that they are mostly the ones in charge of this weird game that they do and so she kind of feels shitty about it but now this new tenant that's moving in it's going to be like her turn to like ruin this girl's life and it's just really interesting so most of the story is told from the wife's point of view but then a little bit later on in the story we do get another point of view that's really unique and really interesting and there was already this kind of like twist kind of thing in the plot that i did not see coming that i was like wait what the fuck and so like i don't know i'm invested am i expecting great things i don't know <laughs> this book has so so reviews so far and to be fair this author's last book that i read from her ended up being a two star for me so like no i'm not expecting great things but i'm having fun so far and that's all that matters you know but anyways, I'm going to go to the gym and peace out for now. And then I think I'm going to try to finish this book later today because I'm invested and I want to know what's going on. We've got breakfast going on. We've got waffles. We've got eggs. I have a peach. I have sausage. I also got Sunny D because I am a child. close to me. <laughs> Hi, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon now and no, I haven't read anything since I last updated you, but I'm finally back in bed and ready to read. I tried to set the mood in here by like lighting all these different candles and I poured myself a cute little iced coffee so we are ready to go. I'm about 220 pages into the book now and I'm still really enjoying it and it's weird because I feel like this is a book where I can see a lot of people not really liking this and I can see why they wouldn't like it especially if you're not into the like you know eat the rich kind of tropes and thrillers 
but I personally love it. I'm finding it so freaking entertaining. Reading from the point of view of this rich woman is just like <laughs> some of the most entertaining shit because she has lines like some of the lines that I highlighted that I just cracked me up is when she's like, sometimes I am scared by how beautiful I am. And she's like, Los Angeles, the ugliest and most beautiful city in the world, depending on where you're staying. Like that is facts. And I'm from LA, so I can definitely admit that it is the ugliest and the most beautiful city in the world somehow like simultaneously. But it's so funny, like she asks her husband if they want to go on a walk and he's like, are you kidding me? Rich people don't walk, their shoes aren't designed for it. <laughs> and she's like, there is nothing more confusing than being sexually attracted to your husband. And she has quotes like, I almost had to get a job. It was inhumane. I don't know, I just, I really enjoy the perspective of the main character because she's like so rich and over the top and ridiculous but in like the most funny entertaining way and i'll admit i wasn't sure if i enjoyed the other point of view that we get in this book because we do change point of views about like i want to say like 50 pages in and we get the point of view of the tenant you know because as i said this whole book is about these rich people fucking with the tenant that moves in to the to the guest house or whatever and so we do get the point of view of the tenant and i will admit at first i wasn't sure if I was loving the point of view from the tenant, but now that I'm like 200 pages in, I think I'm enjoying her point of view even more than the rich people point of view, like the, the main character role. I don't know, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm just loving it. It's just so twisty and I'm just so excited to see where it goes. I don't want to like compare this to Parasite, okay? Because I know Parasite is like one of the most god tier, amazing, Oscar winning, beautiful films of all time. You know, like Parasite? It's hard to compare anything to Parasite, okay, but it does give me similar vibes in the sense that, you know, it is kind of like this eat the rich or like fuck the rich kind of vibe, right? And, you know, we get to see how drastically different the rich people live from other people. And there's a lot of really great like underlying conversations happening in this book about you know, what it means to be a rich person and how different your lifestyles are. Like, I don't know, it's giving me those vibes and it is a thriller because there are some things happening that are very thriller-like. So I'm just curious to see where this is going to end up going. Like, I feel like depending on where this book goes, it could really make or break this book for me. But so far, I'm just having such a fun time with it. Like, I don't think it's really meant to be taken too seriously, but I'm just kind of having fun with like how ridiculous this story is. <laughs> some chicken on this new grill that we got for Christmas and it turned out so yum. Uh, look at how incredible this shit looks. We've got the chicken, the asparagus, we got scalloped potatoes. I would say that I made these myself but I didn't. <laughs> they're store bought but they're like, they taste homemade though. And then I made croissants of course because we gotta have it and Rachel's having a side of mac and cheese that we made the other night. Hello, it's a little bit later in the night, but I wanted to let you know that I finished reading Good Rich People. Dude, this book kind of slaps. In an unexpected turn of events, I think I might give this book like 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed myself reading this. And I honestly feel like... <laughs> such a trash human for loving this book as much as I did. I feel like a lot of people won't like this book and I can understand why it's getting low ratings. Like this is definitely not a book I would just go around recommending to anyone because it is kind of over the top and ridiculous and like kind of dumb, but it's just so much fun. Like I just had such a great time reading this book. I thought the characters were intriguing. I was very intrigued. I loved reading from Lila's point of view. She was like the rich you know, wife in this book. She was just so freaking entertaining. Like her inner thoughts were like cracking me up throughout this whole book. I was kind of nervous going towards the end because I was like, okay, where is this going? Like what is going to happen? And I was actually pretty satisfied by where the story ended up going. Like, I don't know. I was expecting it to get pretty bad, I guess, just because of the low ratings that this book gets. I was like, oh my God, the ending's going to be absolutely ridiculous. And in a way it kind of is, but it's not nearly as like terrible as I was expecting it to be. Like I actually had so much fun with this. I feel like if you're the kind of person who can enjoy a thriller that's a little bit over the top, that has major like fuck the rich people vibes, you would probably love this one. Like, I don't know, I thought it was so good. And I'm so glad, you know, because I feel like this author's writing style for her thrillers really works for me. And I think that's why I was so disappointed that the last book that I read by her ended up being so disappointing by the end. 
And so with this one, I went in with even lower expectations, I think, and then I just enjoyed it even more because I had the lower expectations going in. And I don't know, I don't, I wouldn't want to recommend this to you and have you think that this is like some new, crazy, different kind of thing because it's really not. Like, this is a thriller kind of trope that I've seen many times, but the characters were just so interesting in this one. They were just so intriguing and it was just really well written. I thought it had me interested the whole time, okay? It's been a while since I've been able to just sit down and focus and read a book without the help of the audiobook or anything. Like, I was not distracted while I was reading. I was actually invested in that says something. But yeah, anyways, wow. I can't believe, of course, it always ends up being the book that I don't physically own that I end up loving the most. Like, I don't know what my luck is lately, but it seems like every reading vlog that I do lately, I'm like, yeah, the one that I enjoyed the most is the one that I don't have a physical copy of. But surprising enough, Good Rich People is my favorite thriller that I read for this video. I am shocked by this. I really didn't think I was going to love this book as much as I did. But just to do a quick wrap on the other books that I read for this video, I read Finley, Donovan, Knock Some Dead, which is definitely my second favorite that I read in this video. I feel like, I don't know if I had talked about this earlier or not when I read it, but I wonder if I would have loved this book even more if I had the audiobook listening to it as well. Because when I read the first book, Finlay Donovan is Killing It, I was listening to the audiobook simultaneously and the audiobook just really brought these characters to life for me. So I don't know if I would have given this like a full on five stars if I had the audiobook for this one. But I don't know, this one, it was a four star book for me. I still really enjoyed it. I still freaking love these characters in this series and I will still be reading in the series. It's just, I usually don't ever like sequels more than the first book. Like the first book is just so special to me that I don't think anything could ever come close to it. But I did love this one still. And then I also read uh, The Arrangement and The Sorority Murder. I enjoyed The Arrangement. I can see why everybody is really enjoying this book right now. Some of the twists personally didn't really work for me or they were just a little bit too like far-fetched or whatever, but I can see the hype for sure. And then The Sorority Murder. Unfortunately, this one ended up being mostly a meh forgettable book, which is kind of sad because I'm still obsessed with this book size and this cover and I just, I still want to keep it probably. But yeah, those are the four books that I ended up reading for this vlog. I also uh, did a reading vlog for Reprieve by James Han Matson. So if you want to see my full thoughts on this book, I did an entire exclusive reading vlog for my Patreon for this book. And I have very many thoughts on this one. Like this was a perfect book to do a solo dedicated reading vlog for this one because there's just so much to talk about with this book. And this one kind of describes itself as like a thriller horror kind of book, but it's more of like a slow burn literary horror commentary kind of book. But yeah, I have a whole reading vlog dedicated to it. So again, link will be down below if you would like to check that out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching as always. And let me know if you've read any of these books that I read for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on them. Thank you so much for hanging out and for watching and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.